Welcome to Indian Time. Uh, this is the month of June. Um, time for camas. Uh, the camas is in full bloom all over right now, and usually right after the when the camas is done blooming is when it's uh, time to dig camas. And as I told you before, uh, cooking the camas, which is baked for in, in a pit for about three days. Uh, it's a process that takes uh, a lot of good timing uh, as far as the size of the fire, the size of the hole, the pit, and, um, and the elders a long time ago done it so often that uh, they didn't need to, they just went ahead and knew, knew what size of fire and when to do it. And, how big of a fire to, so everything came out perfect every time. Uh, also, the, this is the end of, uh, of June, getting towards the end of June, and people are starting to get ready for the upcoming uh, power season, celebrations all over the country. Uh, our celebration here in Arley, uh, Montana, will start uh, with the uh, Campers Day on I believe July the 3rd, and um, July the 3rd uh, we'll start out with a memorial as usual in the evening. So in the evening before the, uh, um, before the memorial uh, is done, no, there's no activities, no gambling, uh, every, everything is put on hold until after the memorial. Uh, during the memorial we honor those uh, people that have passed on uh, in the past year, ever since the last uh, our Lee Power our last celebration, and so it's a time where people come in to think about those that have passed on, and uh, there's a procession that takes place. People come in, and uh, there's a special song that will be uh, sung during the during the procession, and people will. Uh, uh, and their, their names, uh, people that have passed on over the year, their names will be read off and uh, to remind people who, the, who these people were that, that passed on. And then the families will, will carry um, uh, mementos or keepsakes of the people that passed on, sometimes a picture of the person. It might be clothing, it might be something uh, the person has worn or used, uh, something that the person liked. Uh, most people will carry a picture of the person that passed on as they go around uh, in the procession so the audience, the people, could, could see who these people were that were honoring. And once this is all done and, and uh, the prayers are done, then the, um, people then are encouraged to, to celebrate and to have a good time for the, for the rest of the uh, celebration. So uh, for those of you that uh, want to come down and, uh, and show your respect to, to those loved ones that have passed on in the past year, please feel free to come on. Come on down to the Arli uh, Celebration Grounds. It usually starts about 7 o'clock. But also at the same time, we think about those that have passed on in years, you know, years ago. That That's always a time that I remember all of my family, not only uh, those that have passed on recently, but all of my family. So this is a time when we think about those loved ones that have passed on uh, in the past. Um, today, uh, we're going to dedicate most of the, uh, the show today uh, to, uh, to my guest. Uh, my guest today is uh, uh, Mr. Pat Pierre from, the, uh, uh, from Turtle Lake. Uh, we wanted to, to discuss a little bit about the uh, enrollment issue. Uh, Pat wants to share some of his thoughts and his ideas on 
the, the efforts that he's, he and the group of the, the tribal elders are trying to do, and that is to include all Indian blood. And I want to have Pat explain a little bit about that, uh, how that's going to help the tribes as whole in general. And, but before that, I would like to um, have Pat talk a little bit, maybe about himself and his family, and, 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 the, and his, uh, what he's seen as he was growing up and why it's important um, that people understand uh, counting all Indian blood uh, is, is going to help <coughs> the tribes as a whole. So with that, I would like uh, to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Pat Pierre, uh, a tribal elder, uh, consultant for the uh, Salish Pond Array Culture Committee for many years. He's a spiritual leader, a prayer leader, and rel well respected in the uh, on the reservation and other areas in, in the country. So, with that, please welcome uh, Mr. Pat Pierre, and uh, we'll see what he has to say today. Pat. <laughs> My name is Pat Pierre. I'm from Cabos Prairie area. Born and raised on Cabos Prairie. <clears throat> I presently live at Dog Lake. <clears throat> and I would like to talk a little bit about the importance of who we are. A little bit of history. A long time ago, our nation's Indian country, we had our dialects that we spoke, language. Every tribe has a different dialect, a different language. Within our area, we have five different tribes that speak pretty much the same. And that kind of goes back to saying that we were one people, totally Indian. As I was growing up, I grew up speaking my language, knowing who I am, where I come from, and what my destination is in life. One of the things that has brought out a lot was the importance of being who we are, the importance of knowing our language, our customs, our traditions. And therefore, live in that way. My grandmother, I grew up around my grandmother, and she, she spoke strictly Indian, didn't know any English. And that is the reason that I learned. And she would teach me different things in life, what to look forward to in, in my time. And in the 73 years that I've been here, I have experienced many changes, and a lot of these changes weren't good for our people. A lot of these changes tried to bring our people down. And to be Indian is something that will never change. To be Indian is something that you live every day, and you live it to the best of your ability, never turning away from who you are. It's impossible to do that. And so we have our traditions, our culture, and we live it, we practice it. I personally practice my culture pretty much to, to as much as that I can remember. The sweat lodges, the medicine doings, and all the things that are important to the well-being of my people. I pray for my people always because they are important to me. We are not just tribal members, we are Indian. And there are times when we come to a place where we need to totally assert who we are. And today, in this time, in this day and age, we do that a lot simply because we want to keep our culture alive. 
our traditional ways, and who we are, and what our destination is in the future, not only for ourselves, but for the generations yet to come. And the Indian man always looks seven generations down the road. It is because of this, it is because of the importance of today that our forefathers in times past made sure that we would have a land when all the land has been taken up, that they made sure that we would have a, a land, what is now called a reservation, that we would grow up in our own land and that we would understand our Mother Earth, Father Sky, and all living things in between. These are the things that keep us alive today. These are the things that, that make us thrive in these hard times. Because we are who we are, we cannot change it. And as times went on, as our forefathers made sure that we would have a homeland. Today, we fight real hard in the system to maintain our homeland. The pureness of our homeland, the streams, the air, the pristine environment. We do that continuously. Some of us do it in our sweat lodges, some of us do it in prayer groups, some of us do it up on the mountaintops. But we pray about our land continuously because we're interested, we're concerned about generations yet coming, that they will be able to enjoy the land that we are enjoying today, that they will know what their roots are, who they are, where they come from, and that they will continue to live that way. We teach that very thing today, that elders of my tribe, my fellow elders, we teach that to our young people. We continuously teach it because we don't want to ever lose that. We don't want them to, to forget who they are. So we drill it into them, on a, sometimes on a daily basis. We're talking to somebody and we're sharing all these experiences and the goodness of what we have seen in the past. And I was six years old when I started to speak English. That is because I had to go to school. When I turned six years old in the month of January, my parents said we could now start speaking English because in the fall you have to go to school. Well, my first response was, I don't want to speak English because I don't want to go to school. Well, that didn't work. I had to learn, I had good teachers. I had two older siblings that spoke fluent. So I learned. But that is one of the times that, one of the hardest times in my life was gone from my present environment as an Indian person, a full-blood Indian person, totally Indians, traditions, everything, and going from there into the school system. <clears throat> like I had to leave behind a lot of my culture, a lot of my ways to get into the school system. And in my early years, I thought that it was terrible. I thought it, was, it should never happen this way. We are Indian. Why do we need all this education? Today, I, I realize why we had to go through that. Simply because we got to live in this modern day world. Some of us still live the old way. We still practice our medicinal plants, our medicine, sweat lodges. We still practice those things. But on the other hand, we still got to live in this present day world and understand what this world has for us, if anything. So we learned, we, we were educated, went through the school system to learn these things. Today, as I look forward to the future generations, I can see where a lot of this is going to change. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why we work so hard at teaching our traditional ways, our language, and all the different the plants, medicinal plants, and Mother Nature herself. So today we, we continue 
to work in that direction because of the importance of who we are. At one time in history, this land was totally Indian country. This continent, which is now called America, was totally Indian country. And so we still have that in our mind that we still are living in our country. We still are going to hold on to what we have. We are not going to let it go. We're not going to lose it. And I've always said in times past that to every problem that arises, there's a solution. To every sickness that arises, there's a healing. These are the ways that I believe today, and I live that way, simply because I believe it. The Indian part of me tells me that I do not have to go all over looking for healing, that it's at hand. So we practice those things and we teach it to our younger generations, that they will get a hold of it and that they will live that way, that they will learn that there are other things in this world beside being out there and being what kids call today macho. So we, we teach. We just got through with the, with the language camp and teaching arts and crafts and different crafts with feathers and, and teaching language because we want them to learn those things. At one time in my young life, every community that I went to, whether it was Elmo, Polson, Pablo, Ronan, St. Ignatius, Arley, wherever, that all the children, when they learned to talk, they were talking Indian. We go out and play with these children, and we all spoke Indian. That's the way it used to be back in my young days. And that instilled in me the desire to hang on to what I got, not to let it go. A lot of our young people lost their language because of government schools, Catholic schools, and the different places they had to go to school. They were not allowed to speak their language. And so a lot of them lost the language there and never really had the desire to pick it back up because to them, I guess by that time, they couldn't see any need for it. Now, some of these people that didn't see a need for it then are beginning to realize the importance of the language. That holds us together. It holds us Indian people together. We can share our experiences in our language and say less words than we would in English. That's how precise the language is. So today, when we look back and we see what our forefathers done for us, we totally respect that. We do want to let it, don't want to let it go, simply because they had the forethought to see our generation still have beautiful mountains, streams, the air be pure, and all living things still intact on the land. So that is our desire today, that if we stay intact as Indian people, if we have our language, if we have our customs, our traditions, that we will continue to be Indian from now on, without end. So that's why we work so hard today at what we do with our children. If perhaps someday they will learn and they will pass it on and their generation will pass it on and generations down as they come. We are Indian people. We are Indian people and that cannot change. We have color, we have our traditions, we have everything still intact. It's here and we're gonna continue on to be that way simply because we cannot change it. It cannot be changed. It will not change because that is who we are. And as long as we are still here, and as long as we're still speaking the language, and we're still teaching to our young people, and to anyone that wants to learn, not necessarily young people, but anyone that wants to learn, we have the door wide open. I live in Dog Lake, my door is open, I teach. Anybody wants to come and learn about different medicinal plants, I take them out and I show them because it's still here. I still have it. And so being Indian, to me, 
is the utmost importance. One day, we look forward to having our land back here. One day, we'll have that hope that we can say, yes, this is all our land. We have not given up anything. We, we stay firm in our beliefs that this is our land, and we're going to continue to have what we have. We do not ever think that we're going to lose this land to some faction that's going to move in on us and overcome us, because we're still going to be here, and we're not going to be overcome in any way, shape, or form, because an Indian is an Indian. And so we go forward and we, we talk about what is happening to our, our people today, or what is happening to, to, to our children. Laws have been passed down, not Indian laws. Indian law lives within. The laws of the land have been passed down, that we cannot punish our children. We cannot reprimand them. We cannot spank them anymore. And them children's got a hold of that. And they, a lot of children will threaten their parents. If you whip me, I'll go tell on you. I'll tell the law. So today, it's even harder to keep young people in line simply because of that. It's even harder to sit them down and say, you are an Indian, you've got to learn. A big percentage of the time, they'll listen and they'll take it to heart. But there are those that will fly away. And so being Indian is, to us is very important, and we live it day by day. We don't ever forget about who we are, simply because that's who we are. We cannot say, well, I'm going to turn this way for a while and go over here for a ways. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that, simply because you are who you are. <clears throat> a lot of us today, well, I don't say a lot, but a few of us today still live as full-blood Indian. And we believe totally that we will live on, maybe not ourselves personally, but our sibling, our, our younger children. I have only one sibling left who is full-blood like myself, her children, my children, and my children's children. We pray that one day, as we walk this path that we have prepared for our people, as we walk this path, that one day we will look back and we'll see our children following us. And all the people that want to learn who they are, they will be following us, seeking this path that is good. So today I want to, I want to say that this is why we are doing what we're doing today. We are seeking in our tribe, the elders of our tribes and a lot of the tribal membership are seeking for the inclusion of other Indian blood into our roles. That by doing this, we can increase the blood quantum in our families, in our children, grandchildren, or whoever they might be. If we can get this true to where we can include other Indian blood, we would immediately gain some full bloods in our tribe. This is Indian, regardless of where they're from. If they're Indian, a full blood in their reservation, our children here are half, enrolled as half. But if we can include that other blood, our children become full blood, which they are. They are full blood. And so that is why we're working toward this. Do not believe it can be otherwise. As we go down the generations, we stay, we stay at one-fourth. Today, we are at one-fourth. That is our tribal law, I guess, so we stay at one-fourth. We don't want to go below that. We stay at one-fourth. It's been said that if we stay at one-fourth, we'll disappear one day. Well, there's a thing going on out there that will make this tribe disappear sooner by including descendants. Some of those descendants are descendants of adoptees, non-Indian. And so that's why we're looking at what we're doing today. We want to be able to include other Indian blood to enhance our blood quantum. 
and to enhance the, the, the chance of, of maintaining our reservation and keeping a hold of who we are. And if we could do that, we will continue on forever. We are working at it continuously. We're not bumping heads with nobody. We're not calling anybody down anything. We're just doing it because we feel it's got to be done. If we don't do it, nobody else will do that. So those of you that are listening, remember to support what your elders are doing. It is your elders and it's my elders that made it possible to be where we're at today on a reservation that we can call our own. And if we'd let this slip by, and if we don't do anything today, surely one day we'll disappear. One day the federal government will come in and look at us and say, why, there's no more Indians here. You all look like the regular population, so. And they will terminate our tribe. Termination is at hand, and we can avoid that by the inclusion of other Indian blood to build up for blood quantum. So listen, pray about it, talk to your neighbors about it, and see what their thoughts are. And by all means, if you want to talk some more about this, give me a call at my home. I would be glad to sit and talk with you. I'll even come and visit you and talk with you about what we're doing. It's important. We have a people that's trying to dilute our Indian blood by what I said beforehand, enrolling descendants. Some of these descendants are, have come from adoptees. So it's important to remember who you are and to stay who you are and always, always be Indian. Okay. Do not turn away from who you are. Leverage. Okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you very much for, for your comments, and, and uh, we're just about out of time here, but for those of you that are listening, I hope that uh, you really think about uh, who are the Salish and Pondere people, uh, Salish, Pondere, and Kootenai people. Who are they? Um, how are they recognized today? Through their language, through their culture, and how are they going to survive in the future? That's maintaining and holding on to the language and the culture. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for joining me. Uh, we'll talk about this some more, I'm sure. Have a good day. Hope to see you soon. <laughs>